there's no fishing tournaments. Most fishing tournaments across everywhere got canceled. I mean, uh, tournaments into October have been canceled in Canada already. Pretty crazy. I still like competitive angling. I still like fishing against other anglers. Uh, it, it just gives you that extra little rush. So we're, we're keeping it alive. We're gonna do what we can this year to do some fun little mini tournaments with other anglers, uh, keeping social distancing in play. But uh, today's the first one. We are at a lake that I've never been to before. Our competitor as well has never been to this lake before. It's sort of a major league fishing type format. Uh, a lake we've never been to before, no pre-fish, we're both going into it blind. And uh, it's gonna be pretty simple. Most bass wins. This lake has smallmouth bass. Um, smallmouth bass is worth one point. I think I think it is lake trout too, so we're gonna say lake trout's worth two points. There's absolutely no prize at all, except uh, bragging rights. And uh, we'll just, we'll wait for our competitor. I think he's coming. I think our competitor's on his way. He was supposed to be here at 3.30. It is now four, so I think we should penalize him. But I need every edge I can get, to be completely honest. This guy, uh, he's won a lot of tournaments. He, he won this little tournament called the KBI, the Conor Bass International, one of the one of the bigger bass tournaments in Canada. He just, he likes to win. He likes to win a lot. He likes to catch a lot of big bass. He's a guiding service. And he started making YouTube videos recently. So, ladies and gentlemen, say hello to Jamie Bruce from Bruce's Canadian Angling. Oh wow, is that pretty, eh? Isn't this nice? Wow. Clear water. So you've never been here before, Jamie? I've been ice fishing here once. Oh shoot, so you have, a, you have an advantage. Okay. Let's keep in mind, here's the one that picked this lake. <laughs> <laughs> so it is true, I did pick this lake. I have heard it has a lot of bass, and I thought for a numbers competition, we should pick a lake with a lot of bass. How long are we fishing till? Three hours? So guys, we're gonna, we're gonna check in at the end. Um, make sure to go watch Jamie's video to see uh, how real bass angler does it. Apparently he's been talking smack. I think it's gonna be good. That's the power of editing, Jay. <laughs> you can make yourself look however you want. I'll give you the head start. Oh, thanks. <laughs> I'll hit the rocks. <laughs> <laughs> Someone's gonna hit a rock. If we don't hit rocks, things are good. There's a couple levels to this competition. Don't wanna hit a rock. Um, and you only got three hours, so you kinda got it. Maybe put your eggs in one basket, or maybe not, but Jamie's a heck of a stick. I'll be, I mean, anything can happen, right? I wouldn't start there. Oh boy, just came up from 70 feet to 30 feet, we're okay. We're okay, always keep the corner of your eye on your graph. So basically my strategy, I did look at this lake before on Google Maps and I'll, I'll pull up an overhead, I'll, I'll pull up a shot for you guys to look at. But as you can see, there's kind of a couple pinched off areas of the lake and those are typically gonna warm up quick. Right now we had 50 to 52 degrees in the boat launch. So I'm thinking if we go a little further off, we're gonna hit that mid 50 degree range. My prediction is they're gonna be shallow. All right, so this whole bay back here kind of looks like a spawning area. I'm gonna kind of fish the rocky points near the mouth. Uh, water's around 51 degrees, and here, you guessed it, are gonna be my two baits. I should probably have a jerk bait in here as well. You got the hair, you got the three inch Ned rig, or however long it is. But th those are my two go-to. Um, hair is pretty good for searching shallower. Ned rig's a little better for searching deeper. A jerk bait would be a prob probably a smarter option than what I'm doing. We're gonna fish the shoreline. Jamie just got into making videos and we were talking about uh, this before before we started filming, but he's like, you know, it's, it's a challenge. There's not really as many tournaments this year, so filming is that extra little challenge and that's why he decided to start making videos. And he's, he's a great teacher. Seriously, guys, check out his channel. He's, uh, he's new to the editing and, and shooting world, but as you'll see from his first video to now, he's progressing very quickly. Nice boulders here, guys. Nice boulders. What's our water temp? First cast, well, I guess I did take cast. 49.5. I like these transition areas. Like I think this is all spawning area back here and this is kind of main lake. So you kind of kind of, kind of want to try to intercept those fish as well. Kind of, you can draw a line between their wintering areas and their spawning areas. It just can narrow it down. Okay, I don't like this. I don't like it. A little too shallow maybe. Decisions, decisions. All right, we're moving. Okay, I'm going out to a bigger section. I'm gonna try something a little more main lake. 
This is tournaments, just frantic, just mind games. And if, like it's 15 minutes in, I just hate losing. Oh boy. Where would you be? This time of year, it's like, they're still a little clumped up. They're not, they're not like scattered. Later spring, summer, you can kind of catch them everywhere. Now it's like, they're still in pretty specific spots. All right, we're an hour in. I've eliminated a lot of water. Eliminating water is great. That's what you should do in pre-fish. But this is a tournament. Derby. Huge, epic, important tournament. Derby competition, 1v1. I got zero so far, Jamie. How about you? Uh, Are we going to get a real answer? What do you want? I don't know. I want a lot, but I feel like it might not be. It's not a lot, but it's double digits. Oh, that's good. Yeah, I got 10. 10? Wow. Okay, well there's hope. Jamie's caught 10. I suck. Feeling good. Ja Jamie's catching fish, which I'm not surprised about. Is that a fish? Yes. Yes. Come on. Come on. We didn't really talk about what a pike's worth. Oh. <laughs> Finally get bit. Oh, Jamie. He makes it look so easy. There you have it. A pike. Oh! Was that a bass? Was that another pike? I don't know, but it broke off. The wheels are coming off, Jamie. They are coming off. We're only an hour in, I got two hours left. Gotta stay positive. Like, it's really where good anglers shine when you throw them on a lake they've never been to before and 10 bass. Like, that was the cool part of major league fishing. Oh man, just so many pike back here. But just the fact that, I don't know, once you know smallmouth, you can kind of take that anywhere and catch smallmouth. Why are there so many pike? This is a nice marabou jig. I will be so mad if I lose this one. Don't you dare. There you go, Jamie. There you go. I'll go catch a couple. Yeah, you guys probably didn't gather that. That's what you call pity. He pitied me. No, Jamie, he's a really nice guy. He, he said just to make it interesting, why don't you go catch some? So Jamie had just caught 16 on, <laughs> on the tip of the island over there and he said, go catch a couple. So I'm gonna go catch a couple. So the thing about springtime smallies, like Jamie said, is they can just be so congregated. And especially this lake is a little bit of a cooler, clear lake trout type lake. And those sometimes just take a little longer to get moving to get everything you know, going. So this is more of a wintering type area that I think Main Lake Point. There's a fish. There's a fish, Jamie Bruce. Thank you. Thank you. Guys, we worked so hard for this bass. I've never worked so hard for such a small bass. Thank you, Jamie, for the pity bass. Um, I wanted there to be some surprise at the end of this video, being like, I wonder who won the competition. Right now, Right now, it's, it's, it's looking like not me. On the Ned Rig, dragging along the bottom, that fish was a little bit deeper. Um, I don't even know how deep we are right now. Probably about 20, 25 feet. There's a fish coming up right now. He's coming up to my tube, or my Ned. Come on, he just tapped it. Yes! <laughs> oh, I had played video games with that one. Jamie said that he had to play with a lot of these fish and it took a little bit to get them to go. That is a little bit fatter. I am not gonna get too greedy. I'm just happy to catch bass. Would I rather be in the same boat with Jamie sharing hook sets? Absolutely, but uh, in these COVID times, this is how we have fun. Number two, which doesn't really count, but number two. Man, 
just such a small spot where there's so many fish. Ooh, that's a nicer one. Guys, once you're allowed to hire a fishing guide again, you should hire Jamie and get him to teach you how to bass fish. That's probably what I'm gonna do. Number three. Finally, I can see my jig going down. There's a fish waiting for it. I'm gonna get my vlog cam to show you guys what this looks like. All right, guys, I'm gonna try to multitask. That right there is a fish sinking back down. So when you look at a, a fish finder, that's scrolling to the left, that's history. That bar on the right, that's real time. That's what's going on. So I'm gonna try to show a real time strike here. Okay, so now you can see my lure coming down. Okay, see that? I'm gonna hold it kind of two feet off the bottom. So I just, I just stopped it, I closed my bail. Now, ideally, another red mark like that is gonna separate itself off the bottom and come intercept my bait. That would be best case scenario. See that red mark, how it just got super thick? A fish just ate it on the way down. There we go. I got him. That was not how I want to show it. There's another fish down there, guys. This is, this is good. Oh, that's a nice smallie. <laughs> They're getting bigger, guys, on that Midwest finesse jig. There you go. Going back. Yeah, I want to, I want to show you guys the strike yet. It's tough to pull it off. Hey, look at this. Look at that fish shrieking up. Look at that. That's my lure. He just ate it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'm done playing video games. Number five, Jamie. This, that number, that fish should really be added to your total. So guys, I've just been spot locked for the last, well, all of these fish basically. And if you guys haven't heard of spot lock before, basically it's an anchor that isn't really an anchor. It's just your trolling motor using waypoints using GPS coordinates and it just locks in on the spot so it'll adjust the speed and hold you on the spot. I know most of you guys are like, yeah, everyone's heard of spot lock, but no, if you're if you're getting into it, it's like, how is this trolling motor just working? Well, it's a pretty amazing technology. Whoever came up with that hopefully is very rich. All right, guys, we're gonna go check back with Jamie. What a beautiful evening. Hey, gotta fish a new lake, gotta catch some smallmouth bass and gotta hang out with Jamie, kind of, at a distance, boat to boat. What's going on, Bubba? Well, we thought about keeping it a surprise who the winner was, but I don't really think it, I don't, I don't think it'll work that way. Did you win? <laughs> I don't think so. <laughs> <laughs> Let's hear it. What's the count? Uh, I think the total is, one second. Thanks to your pity, my total ended at six bass. Oh, you did get six? Yeah. Well, that's nice. Yeah, they were like, they were stacked. Yeah. It was, I, I just spot locked and like caught them and there was like two chasing it up at the same time. And yeah. Let's go to the shore and then from six feet away you can tell me your winning techniques. Okay. How does that sound? If you're willing to divulge. Yeah, that's sweet. Well, Jamie, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm the loser. Yeah. Which I think we both expected. No. <laughs> <laughs> what was the final score? You caught one more? I got 17, yeah. 17, I had six, but really he beat me 17 to zero, essentially, because he gave me the spot. But can you, uh, from six feet away, can you show us what the hot baits were? Uh, yeah. And what was the spot, basically? Uh, just a main lake wintering type point, you think? Or? Yeah, they were, you could tell that they wintered near that. So there was probably a deeper spot where they were. And then they pulled up, um, some were right crawling up on the, on the rock pile, like in four or five feet of water. And the majority of them were just like a step off, like in that 15 to 20 foot range. Uh, there was one big boulder, like the size of a Volkswagen, <laughs> and there were fish all over that thing. And like you saw, I was just trading through. I'd catch four on a Ned rig, four on a spy bait, uh, a couple on a swim bait, you know, back to the Ned rig. Yeah. And it was, uh, you know, just kept them on their toes. That little slim swims, that nice. was a weapon. That's a little two and a half inch Z-Man bait. This thing's a staple anywhere you go in North America by the looks of things. It's a Z-Man hula stick. That thing's just bruised and beaten from Abuse. bass fishing the yeah. last few days, so. And you can catch so many bass on one of those, eh? Yeah, and you can just get it right back down there and be catching again. You don't have to mess with your, your, uh, you know, your plastic or change the bait or anything. There's a used and abused jerk bait that's uh, what I planned on using most of the day. I caught some on it. 
and it's a really good search bait, especially this time of year. Uh, use the deep one because there's no reason not to. Yeah. Um, you, you can run it shallow enough, as shallow as you want to fish, and those ones in 12 and 15 feet will still, you know, gets down there to six or seven, and that's enough to engage them and and get them to rise up and at the very cool. least show themselves. So that's, that's your favorite search bait as a jerk bait at this time of year? Oh yeah, hands yeah. down, hands down. Or like a swim bait too yeah. is good. You can do the deep shallow. That's about it, really. Um, spy bait was solid. The I spot, caught... the spot was the deal. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I got, I took every rod in my boat and caught a bass on that yeah. spot, like pretending that it was making a difference, but I mean, it was like, it was just keeping them fresh, but yeah. it was a spot. I mean, find a big boulder with a bunch of bass on it, you're gonna have a good time. Guys, uh, if you want to watch Jamie's side of the day of the evening, which uh, involves a lot more bass and a lot bigger bass, I think he caught a bigger one right at the end of the day, like a four pounder. Uh, I'll link his video below. Go subscribe. He's putting out more videos than me right now. Um, no, that's good. We'll, uh, we'll probably do this again. And uh, maybe, maybe a walleye tournament next, who knows? But thank you guys for watching, and we'll see you guys next time.